good morning to all of you once again i welcome all of you in today's lecture basically uh, in the previous uh, last lecture we was uh, completed our module number 5 okay so in today's lecture we are going to start module number 6 and uh, this module is our last modules okay so i will share with all of you the today's presentation so basically as far as concern with the module number 5 if you see what we have covered in the module number 5 the road construction aspect okay then we have two types of the or two types of the road that is the rigid pavement and flexible pavement then also we were seen in the module number 5 the asphalt mixing and batching plant then we have the hot mix plant then in case of the hot mix plant we were seen that how the mixing and batching of the bitumen will take place in case of the hot mix plant then also we was covered in the module number 5 that the that is the sensor paper for rigid roads so in case of this particular articles we was seen that the different types of the road construction equipment and their descriptions and the applications then we are think plant weld conveyors then a cable ways the constructions of the new railway track and last article in the last lectures we was covered that is the aspect of bridge constructions so this is the syllabus we was covered in case of the module number 5 now in today's lecture uh, we are going to start module number 6 and this is the last module Uh, the if you see the syllabus of module number 6 the diaphragm wall will be there then what is diaphragm wall what is the purpose of this particular wall so someone is okay so diaphragm wall then purpose and the construction method so diaphragm what is diaphragm wall what is the purpose how it is constructed then uh, safety measure in the constructions of the diaphragm wall then prevention of accident and uh, during the constructions of the diaphragm wall what care should be taken to avoid the accident during the uh, post and pre uh, construction uh, phases in case of the diaphragm wall and the last article in case of the module number 6 is introduction to disaster management okay so this is the uh, syllabus we are going to cover in the coming lectures in case of the module number 6 now uh, if you talk about the diaphragm wall okay the diaphragm wall is similar kind of the constructions work we was seen in case of the retaining uh, retaining wall okay so the similar kind of work will be there as far as concern with the diaphragm wall also so look at the definitions of this particular diaphragm wall what is diaphragm wall how it is constructed uh, the step by step procedure for the constructions of the diaphragm wall so basically 
the diaphragm wall or concrete or the reinforced concrete walls which is constructed in slurry supported or the open trenches below existing ground okay concrete is placed using the trami method or by installation of the precast concrete panels or which is known as the precast diaphragm wall therefore the diaphragm wall can be constructed at a depth of 150 meters so a, if you see here the depth 150 uh, meters is the height of the diaphragm wall and the width is 0.5 meter to 1.5 meters so heavy uh, thickness width we are going to construct in case of the diaphragm wall so diaphragm wall construction methods are relatively quiet and cause little or no vibrations therefore they are specially suitable for civil engineering project in densely populated inner cities areas now uh, the another important aspect with respect to the diaphragm wall is due to their ability to keep deformation low and provide low water permeability diaphragm walls are also used to retain excavation pit in the direct vicinity of existing structures so if you talk about uh, the diaphragm wall basically whenever uh, the uh, construction is going on under water for example if you want to construct a bridge pier okay so uh, and the bridge pier is constructed under the water so in that case uh, for the constructions of the bridge piers we have to make such arrangement we we called it as a uh, the dry place okay there should not be uh, the water enter uh, in the uh, construction area where we are going to construct the uh, the bridge piers okay so we need to uh, dry that area Uh, which which will be free from the water okay such kind of work we have to carried out so um, we are going to construct such work and we called it as a diaphragm wall then uh, the diaphragm wall are uh, also constructed under uh, ground and uh, there are two types of the element which is commonly in use so first one is the retention system and the permanent foundation wall okay so to retain the water or to retain the soil so we called it as a retention systems or retention wall and uh, for retaining the or for constructions of the foundations we we called it as a permanent foundations wall okay it is an in situ reinforced concrete structure that is constructed panel by panel the wall is usually designed to reach very great depth sometime up to the uh, 50 meter to 150 meter depth a huge depth uh, we are going to construct with the help of the diaphragm wall now look at this uh, particular diaphragm wall here okay uh, so uh, this is the uh, the diaphragm wall uh, you can see here uh, this is the uh, the area where we want to construct a bridge pier so uh, to uh, to uh, dry this particular area first we need to uh, make such arrangement we called it as a diaphragm wall okay so for constructions of the diaphragm wall another kind of special attention we require that is we also required different types of the machinery uh, crane then we required jcb and uh, we required uh, the Uh, another special instrument for excavation purposes and we also uh, required the <coughs> the ladders to enter into the uh, uh, working area so such kind of arrangement we, we will require so we let us see how the diaphragm wall is constructed uh, under which circumstances we are going to use the diaphragm wall and how the diaphragm wall will constructed we will see in the next slide so if you talk about the diaphragm wall uh, diaphragm wall of shallow depth are often left unsupported since they are 
class as a semi rigid structure okay however for deeper excavation support is required to restrict the lateral deflections okay so in case of the uh, deeper excavation or for a greater depth if you want to uh, construct then uh, generally we require the lateral supports so if you do the lateral support then uh, the deflection uh, should be avoided then the diaphragm wall is ideal for soft clay and the loose sand below the water table uh, there uh, where there is a need to control the lateral movements so uh, uh, somewhere if there is a loose soil or the loose sand will be there below the water table so if you want to control the lateral movement okay so we need to uh, construct the diaphragm wall and on, on the diaphragm wall we are going to support the pr loads okay so uh, this is one of the another important uh, you can say uh, the applications where we are going to construct the diaphragm wall okay then uh, uh, the material uh, we are going to use for the purpose of constructions of the diaphragm wall so as far as cons uh, concerned with the constructions of the diaphragm wall we are going to use uh, the different types of the material so uh, opc that is the ordinary portland cement then the second important materials we are going to use for the constructions of the diaphragm wall is aggregate so the coarse aggregate which is having the uh, 20 mm size uh, we are going to use then the another important materials that is the sand so well graded sand consisting of 50% of coarse sand okay then uh, as per as concern with the another kind of uh, the um, admixtures we are going to use that is the water so uh, clean water free from impurities such kind of uh, the water we are going to use for the constructions of the diaphragm wall uh, uh, truly speaking as per as concern with the water characteristics a potable water uh, we have to use for the constructions of the diaphragm wall okay then uh, number fifth is admixtures so uh, if you want to increase the strength of the diaphragm wall then we are going to use different uh, uh, admixtures in the form of chemical admixtures and uh, uh, the chemical admixture shall be used as per the is 456 1978 so whatever may be the uh, characteristics or whatever may be the specific uh, criteria which is given in is 456 1978 so that chemical admixture should uh, satisfy the requirement then uh, if you talk about the reinforcement then uh, we are going to use mild steel bars for the constructions of the diaphragm wall then bentonite another important materials we are going to use so bentonite use Uh, uh and uh, uh, we have to follow uh, the is uh, 125849189 uh, under this is uh, the whatever may be the characteristics which is men mentioned uh, in that uh, is we have to follow as per as concern with the bentonite then clay uh, the another important material we are going to use for the constructions of the diaphragm wall is clay so clay shall confirm to is 1498 1970 so this is another is uh, uh, we have to follow in case of the clay materials then uh, the concrete mixes okay so for plastic concrete diaphragm wall the water cement ratio uh, shall, shall not be greater than 0.5 so if you see the concrete mix so water cement ratio should not be greater than 0.5 so this is about uh, the material uh, we are going to use for the constructions of the diaphragm wall then uh, the next important uh, things we should keep in our mind in case of the diaphragm wall that is the selections of the diaphragm wall okay so on which uh, uh, under which circumstances or under uh, uh which point uh, we should keep in our mind while constructions of the or the selections of the type of diaphragm wall so uh, the selection of type of uh, diaphragm uh, wall depends upon the number of factors the first one is the site conditions okay so uh, 
the first if you talk about the first uh, uh, the uh, selection factors that is the site conditions so uh, if the uh, your construction site is uh, uh, the marshy ground or uh, very wet ground will be there or uh, loose sand or loose uh, soil will be there or soft soil will be there so depending upon the site condition uh, we have to select the different types of the diaphragm wall then the second important factor we should keep in our mind that is the heterogeneity or the perviousness of the substructure data so uh, if you uh, talk about the perviousness of the substructure data that is below the ground level if you want to construct a foundations okay so uh, the underground will uh, percolate through the different uh, layers of the soils and uh, depending upon the permeability of the soil below the uh, ground surface uh, so what should be the permeability uh, in uh, uh, say, uh, you can say uh, mm per day or mm per hours so depending upon that permeability we are going to select the diaphragm wall then and the third parameter or the third factor which will affect the selection of the type of diaphragm wall uh, that is the geological features okay so if you talk about the geological features we have different types of the geological features so fold folds uh, incline cracks will be there in case of the underground so if the such uh, uh, kinds of the geological features is available cert uh, certain mineral composition will be there so uh, certain uh, uh, geological features hard rock igneous rock metamorphic rock or the sedimentary rock so depending upon that uh, we have to select the types of the diaphragm wall okay then uh, the another important parameters or the factor which will affect the selection type of the type of diaphragm wall is the depth of overburden features then uh, the anticipated stress and the deformations due to the embankment constructions and the reservoir loading conditions okay then uh, the next parameter is the uh, availability of construction materials okay so uh, we require different types of the construction materials we have seen earlier in the previous slides so different types of the construction material uh, uh, available okay so uh, if the uh, locally available materials is uh, uh, if you use for the purpose of construction material ultimately the total construction cost of the diaphragm will be minimum otherwise if you uh, bring the uh, construction material from a longer distances then ultimately the transportation cost will increases and due to which the overall construction cost of the diaphragm wall it will increases uh, so as far as uh, concern with the construction material we have to we need to focus on the locally available material we need to satisfy uh, the uh, the characteristics uh, and we look into consideration the different is which is mentioned in the previous slides okay then techno economic considerations so these are the factors we look into considerations while selection of the diaphragm wall uh, for the purpose of construction then uh, these are the application where we are going to uh, construct the diaphragm wall so the first uh, the uh, ground applications of this particular wall diaphragm wall is underground stations okay so somewhere we required the constructions of the underground station for example uh, in case of the marine structures also okay uh, in case of the marine uh, we need to construct certain underground stations uh, so we required the diaphragm wall construction then multi level car parks so this is a multi level car, car parks uh, we are going to use the diaphragm wall then open cut tunnel so whenever there is a open cut tunnel uh, uh, we, we we have to use uh, the open cut tunnel in the form of diaphragm wall the, the another applications uh, on site applications of this particular diaphragm wall is bay in the water for ship building and the ship repairs okay so uh, generally for uh, the uh, ship repairs so uh, as far as concern our vehicles we have a garage okay uh, garage uh, we have the garage for the purpose of maintenance so such garage uh, 
uh, we have to construct in the marine structures also for the purpose of maintaining the ship so uh, we are going to use the diaphragm wall uh, so this is the another application then uh, the quay walls then tunnel ventilation shaft so uh, for the purpose of uh, tunnel ventilation also uh, this is the applications of the diaphragm wall then support for open or top down excavations then ground water flow barriers so another application uh, for the retaining wall then cut off provision to support deep excavation then final wall for basement or other underground structures that is the tunnel and shaft then uh, separating structure between major underground facilities as a form of foundation uh, barrier pile or the rectangular pile use in the congested area uh, practically it is uh, uh, applicable for deep basement also so these are the area where we required such a diaphragm wall so remember that uh, this is the applications where we are going to use from uh, walls okay then uh, how the uh, construction of the diaphragm wall is going on so as far as concerned with the general procedure of the constructions the uh, excavation is carried out using a heavy well uh, heavy self guided mechanical crab uh, which is uh, su suspended from a large crawler crane okay so uh, if you talk about the uh, constructions procedure first uh, uh, we need uh, the crawler crane okay and we need a mechanical grab uh, suspended okay and uh, uh, it has a, the uh, the teeth to excavate the uh, ground materials then uh, as far as concerned with the second step of the constructions the diaphragm wall were excavated and the constructed in uh, discrete panels of a, a span between 2.8 meter and uh, 7 meter length uh, with a depth reaching 30 meters okay as the excavation proceeds support fluid was added into the excavation to maintain the uh, stability of the surrounding ground and to prevent a collapse and uh, that fluid is called bentonite okay so which is a uh, poser made of uh, a special type of soluble or the soluble clay and it is mixed at the mixing plant with potable water then uh, a heavy chisel may be used uh, if an obstruction of hard strata is encountered during the uh, construction of the uh, diaphragm wall. So to break up the obstruction for removal by the grab, uh, when the excavation is completed, a submersible pump connected to a uh, tremie pipe and uh, will be lowered into the panel excavation down to the toy level. This pump uh, the fluid down to the toy level and then from the bottom of the excavation back to the uh, descending unit in order to separate the bentonite from the uh, suspended particles con contained in it. At the same time, a fresh fluid will be added to the top of the excavation to maintain the stability of the ground. So, uh, if you see the general features or the procedure for the constructions of the, uh, the diaphragm wall, first we need to excavate the, uh, the uh, site where we, we are going to construct the uh, diaphragm wall. Then uh, we have to select the depth, okay, how much depth uh, we are going to excavate, uh, then uh, the thickness of the wall and then uh, we, we uh, call it as a bentonite, okay. So bentonite uh, is the uh, fluid which uh, is a poser made of special type of uh, soluble clay and mix be, uh, mix at the mixing uh, mixing plant with the potable water so such kind of uh, uh, work we have to do and then uh, somewhere uh, the percolation of water will be there uh, uh, at the time of construction of the diaphragm wall then we need to pump that uh, water uh, and we make uh, the excavated uh, ground uh, dry so with the help of the submersible pump we need to uh, uh, we need to uh, supply the water from that uh, constructed area to the another area. 
so such kind of the general procedure we have to follow step by step for the constructions of the diaphragm wall then at this uh, stage i want to play one video so you will uh, see in this particular video how the constructions of diaphragm wall will going on so Now at this stage I am going to play one video how the diaphragm wall will be constructed so you can have a idea about the constructions of the diaphragm wall. Access Engineering PLC in their relatively short account of 14 years in the annals of construction services in Sri Lanka have reached iconic status. Their record and reputation for successfully employing new and innovative technologies have captured the imagination of professionals. Many construction or pre-construction projects have employed new and fresh technologies, placing them ahead among other competitors. Access Engineering has introduced the concept and execution of the diaphragm wall in the preliminary stages of preparation of subterranean structures at foundation levels in mega high-rise building projects. This internationally advocated exciting new development has been adopted and successfully implemented in Sri Lanka just recently. The notable advantages over other available solutions can be seen. Lower cost quicker process, no grout used to seal the water seepage, effective in all soil, either rid or with higher water table, no extra building of wall necessary, this saves material and resources, added advantage of digging deep even as much as 50 meters, ideal for multi-level basement stories, method brings greater stability and verticality, this then is the future for building basements. As part of the attendant method, there is the additional value of ground stabilizing before diaphragm wall construction. This is wrought with soil nailing and shotcreting technologies. Shotcreting refers to a method in concrete work in which the concrete mix is applied in layers under the pressure of compressed air. Alternatively, a flexible reinforcing mesh may be held against the soil face beneath the head plates. These additional provisions are in complete accord with green building processors. The first steps begin with constructing the guide wall. This demarcates the lines within which the grabber will dig the trenches. The horizontal ground level concreted platform ensures that the grabber will be stable on ground for the actual digging. The Bauer GB34 proceeds with amazing accuracy. Vertical trench walls are possible because of this. The magnificent Bauer GB34 is key to the success of the diaphragm wall. The very nature of the grabber bucket and its reach ensures the ability to dig vertically and maintain accuracy. Onboard computers maintain the tension so that lateral oscillation of the grabber is minimal and this adds to the effectiveness in maintaining verticality. Slurry of bentonite, which is stored in a set of silos, is applied into the trench to ensure that caving in of the sides is prevented. At the concrete pouring stage of the construction of the diaphragm wall, the bentonite slurry is taken back into the silos after desanding for reuse. This also contributes to cost saving and protection of environment. Importantly, the stop end where the elements of the wall join is maintained free of water seepage with the employment of the rubber seal. This is a crucial factor, again far superior to the usage of grouting to seal off. 
the Coden Test, another vital component in the armory of Axis Engineering's devices for maintenance of the high standard. Notably, the rebar cage is prefabricated on site. Instead of spot welding or tying, the use of a coupler enhances workability while also saving on cost. In the dug trench segment, the rebar cage is lowered in position. Large-scale cages can be lowered using this approach. The speed at which all this multiple activity can be done is notable. Pre-mixed concrete is applied. Using the double tremi, self-compacted concrete is introduced. And while the filling of the trench happens, the slurry is pushed upward to the surface. During the process of placing concrete through tremies into the crevice or trench, the concrete detritus with sand and other particulates is also pushed to the surface. This solid substance, which emanates to the surface, is subjected to head cutting. After hacking away the unsound head concrete, a tie beam completes a section of the diaphragm wall. Soil anchoring is the final element. The Clem machine is outstanding in its flexibility, even in confined space. This technologically advanced device drills through the perimeter and anchors a diaphragm wall with the surrounding subterranean soil. In this technique, Soil is reinforced with slender elements such as reinforcing bars, which are called nails. These reinforcing bars are installed into rows of holes that are bored into the soil and usually cement grout is injected under high pressure. Wedge plates provide added stability and secure the nail ends or wire rods reinforced with the cement grouting. This securing and nailing of the concrete wall structure adds to the long-term stability and verticality of the wall. In addition to this application, the Clem is adaptable in other contexts such as slope stabilization, stabilizing of vertical structures, stabilization of diaphragm walls. Quality is maintained throughout with measurements using the inclinometer repeatedly checks that the wall remains within the minimum allowance of vertical movement. This modern advancement in pre-construction methodology has been applied at the worksite of the ITC Tower Project on Golf Face in Colombo. Access Engineering PLC has been able to effectively and successfully deliver excellence with the diaphragm wall solution. So, how the uh, diaphragm wall is constructed, uh, you have seen in the in this particular video. So, uh, after uh, the complete construction procedure of the diaphragm wall, uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell you about the sequence of the work of the diaphragm wall. Okay. So, as we uh, seen in the uh, video also. Uh, the sequential, uh, typical sequential uh, completion or the working of the diaphragm wall which include uh, the constructions of the guide wall. Then the second important component of the diaphragm wall is the excavation to form the diaphragm wall trench. Then support the trench cutting using the bentonite slurry. Okay. So, if you want to cut the trenches, then we have to use the bentonite slurry. Then insert reinforcement and placing of the concrete to form the wall panels. So, these are the sequence uh, we need to follow in the case of the constructions of the diaphragm wall. Then, uh, the first, uh, uh, the further, uh, you can say the explanation uh, on the work sequence, uh, that is we need to uh, know about certain things, that is about the guide wall. So, uh, if you talk about uh, the guide wall, uh, the guide wall is two parallel concrete beam uh, 
which is constructed along the side of the wall then uh, the guide wall maintain the horizontal alignment and wall continuity of a diaphragm wall and uh, while they provide support for the upper uh, soil uh, you can say during the depth uh, panel excavation so uh, the next uh, things we should uh, keep in our mind as far as concerned with the construction sequence of the diaphragm wall is uh, something so uh, if you see about the sequence uh, in case of the diaphragm wall constructions here in this uh, photograph uh, this is the guide wall okay which is constructed uh, uh, horizontally here then uh, we have the uh, trench to be excavated downward using the grab or clamp shell until it reaches the required level so this uh, trench uh, we are going to construct with the help of uh, the instrument that is the grab or the clamp shell in the video also we were seen that how the verticality we we have maintained uh, with respect to the grab so whatever may be the pressure we required all this is a computerized machinery and whatever may be the pressure which is required to uh, uh, the uh, uh, constructions purposes we have to maintain uh, with the computers uh, programming uh, and uh, that uh, which is uh, uh, attached with the grab or the clamshells okay then uh, you look at the this is the ground level okay and below that ground level we are going to construct a diaphragm wall then uh, we have the two rc guide wall on both sides of this particular trench so are the rc guide wall to control and uh, to protect and control of the wall movement so uh, for example uh, there will be a uh, the uh, horizontal or vertical wall movement chances will be there at the time of uh, the excavation then uh, these two rc guide wall is uh, the support uh, and this support is uh, protect the uh, the horizontal or vertical wall movement during the uh, excavation and uh, we have the bentonite slurry uh, to counter balance the pressure from the soil uh, so to maintain the pressure for example uh, during the excavation uh, there will be a uh, uplift pressure due to the water is available below the ground so to counter balance that particular uh, uh, the uh, uplift pressure then uh, uh, we need to use the bentonite slurry so as to uh, we can uh, counter balance whatever may be the pressure uh, which is coming from the soil and the uplift pressure so this is about how the uh, the uh, particular things are the aspect we should keep on uh, mind while construction of such kind of uh, the activity below the ground as a diaphragm wall then uh, if you talk about the uh, uh, trench excavation uh, in case of the normal uh, soil condition excavation uh, is done using a clamshell or uh, grab supported by the cables to a crane uh, in case of the uh, enter counting boulders or the uh, gravity hammers that is the chisel uh, we can say the chisel will be used to break the rock and then uh, take the uh, spoil out using the grab so in case of the uh, hard uh, ground uh, for the purpose of uh, constructions then we are going to use the chisel okay uh, the technique which uh, involves excavation in narrow trench that is kept full of an engineering fluid or the slurry then the slurry exert the hydraulic pressure against the trench wall and act as a uh, shoring to prevent the collapse, uh, collapse okay so during the trench excavation we should keep uh, our mind the first thing is the nature of the soil nature of the ground okay and depending upon that uh, we need to apply the different kind of the excavation machinery for the purpose of uh, the excavation of the trench for a diaphragm wall so uh, see here uh, we have the crane uh, we have the grab gear and uh, below that we are going to um, 
see here how the sequence uh, we have to follow for the purpose of the excavation of the trenches okay then uh, we have the clamp shell to excavate the trench to form a diaphragm wall panels so uh, with the help of this clamp shell it has two jaw okay uh, so this jaw will uh, insert it with the uh, the pressure uh, the pressure is uh, done with the help of hydraulic and this machine is or the clamp shell is uh, hydraulically operated okay so the pressure is applied on this clamp shell with the help of hydraulic and uh, we can easily maintain the verticality in during the uh, inserting of this particular clamp shell uh, into the uh, ground and it uh, excavate easily whatever may be the uh, material uh, which is present in the uh, below the ground so uh, as far as concern with the excavation support uh, the side inside the trench cut can collapse easily uh, then bentonite slurry is uh, used to protect the sides of the soil so uh, this bentonite slurry is a very you can say uh, important as far as concerned with the diaphragm wall construction point of view so whatever may be the slurry will be there uh, we are going to use uh, to protect the uh, the sides of the soil then uh, if you talk about the reinforcement okay so the reinforcement is inserted in the form of steel cage uh, but may be required to lap a few uh, sections in order to reach the required length so uh, in the video also we were saying that uh, whenever if you want to uh, join uh, two types of uh, two reinforcement with each other then we have to use the lap length or lap joint okay so uh, we are going to thread the uh, both the sides of the uh, the reinforcement and then with the coupling we are going to join uh, both the reinforcement with each other and uh, in this way we are going to uh, you can say made a cage uh, of the uh, reinforcement cage for the purpose of uh, construction of the diaphragm wall so look at this uh, uh, uh photographs here in these photographs you can see how the fixing and the placing of reinforcement cage will be there so this is about how the uh, reinforcement cage is uh, uh, constructed uh, on the side itself how the uh, construction cage uh, that is reinforcement cage is lifted with the help of uh, the uh, the heavy lifting machine uh, that is the crane boom crane will be there and how the uh, placement of this particular uh, uh, cage uh, reinforcement cage is uh, uh, loaded on the vehicles and if the site is uh, uh, long from your uh, this particular site then actual construction site is longer than the uh, the uh, fabrication site then uh, on the lorry or on this particular truck we have to uh, uh, transport uh, this particular uh, reinforcement cage at the site so this uh, sequence we have to follow in case of the uh, the placing and uh, fixing the reinforcement cage then as far as concerned with the concrete uh, placing of concrete is done by using trummy pipe to avoid the uh, the segregation of the uh, concrete so trummy is the pipe also we was seen in the uh, unit number 4 so trum is the pipe which is having a certain diameter and uh, it is used under water construction purpose uh, so as concrete uh, being poured down bentonite will be displaced uh, due to its lower density than the concrete then bentonite is then collected and reused okay then uh, this is about the concreting how the concreting is done uh, while you uh, constructions of the diaphragm wall so uh, this is uh, one of the important photographs uh, uh, you can see here uh, uh, this is the reinforcement cage we have to place in this particular uh, trench after placing this reinforcement with the help of a heavy uh, machinery that is the jc uh, uh, crane then after that what we need to do we need to place the trummy pipe okay so this is the funnel type uh, inlet of and this is the pipe uh, how the concreting is done so uh, we have the ready mix concrete 
from that uh, uh, you can say ready mix concrete we have to pour the concrete in the hopper or in this funnel and then the concrete uh, the concrete will coming from the inlet at uh, 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 as as per the design depth and uh, we we are going to uh, do the concreting okay so this is the uh, the complete uh, concreting at the end of the concreting of this particular trenches so how the concreting is done you can see in this particular uh, slide then uh, uh, joining for the diaphragm wall panels so diaphragm wall cannot be constructed continuously for a very long uh, you can see the span uh, this particular wall is usually constructed in alternative section so two top uh, two stop and tubes will be placed at the end of the excavated trench before the concreting and uh, the tubes are withdrawn at the same time of the concreting so that a semi circular or uh, the semi circular end section is formed so this is about how the jointing for the diaphragm wall is uh, uh, panel wall is important so today we will stop here so if anybody is having any questions uh, please ask right now तुषार पाटिल स्नेहल ऋषिकेश बोरसे निकिता अनुष्का Anybody is 